Thank you. Awesome. All right. Last but not the least. So you've heard a lot of uh, different opinions on enterprises, on cloud, on carriers. And one of the themes of this conference is harmonizing open source. And what I want to do is walk you through one example of how it gets done, but show you the work we have in front of us. And at the Linux Foundation, you know, we're very excited to sort of do this work. So let me just go very quickly and talk about what I call the full stack. And this will be a teaser for things to come, but let me explain what this slide talks about. We're all, we all love layers, right? And we all lo love uh, to describe the pieces of network. So here you go. You got the disaggregated hardware that gets abstracted in some version with some standard, whether it's a, you know, from the hardware layer, you got the SI and the ONI bootloader type interfaces, goes up into the operating system. You have open operating systems that run it. And then you start separating the control from the data plane that we all call SDN, the original SDN. You get into some version of a cloud. And then you get into orchestration management policy. And then you start using it with analytics and other sort of end-to-end uh, -end systems. And then what really matters, and this should not be a surprise, is the application layer, which is on the top. The application layer is really you know, two things for an enterprise. It's their workloads. And for a carrier, it's their product and your services that you and I and the businesses consume. That's it. It's not any more complicated than that. Now, what we have done is we have taken a view of the entire ecosystem. So, you know, on the bottom you see, you know, Linux Foundation, and dotted is outside Linux Foundation. And what we have done is we have put it all on a single slide that includes where some of the standards are uh, focusing on. Now, keep in mind, it's a very busy slide. But you can, it, but trust me, it was way busier six months ago before ONAP, okay? So here you go. So this slide essentially shows you, and I see a lot of cameras, let, Take a picture, it's okay. All right, so what it shows you is at the bottom you got things like open compute, telephone infrastructure project. These are open source hardware. They are working to help us independently write software. Then you have the data plane layer, right? OVS, FDIO, IOWiser, DPDK, opendataplane.org. You have the operating systems. Uh, you, then you have the control plane. And then you have orchestration, and you see you know, ONAP kind of going vertically through this, uh, open stack on the side. You see the cord and ONUS right there, uh, open contrail. And then you have OPNFV sort of in the middle where it's a CICD type end-to-end -end testing umbrella, right? That's kind of on the, what, what we know and love, right? The hypervisor-based networking stack, whatever. The middle part is cloud native. Right? So as you start getting into you know, cloud-native, cloud-native apps, you get the Kubernetes of the world. You've got open containers, right? So you, know, you have an option to build a stack and automate the stack using nothing but containers, right? And, and those are the open source projects there. On the right is standards. And if we have heard a lot of discussion, you know, oh, standards, open source, they need and they will work together. Remember, not all the standards serve the entire stack. IEEE, 3GPP, OIF, they are right where they are shown here. IETF, IETC, ONF, they are where they are shown. TMN Forum, ITU, NIST, I mean, all of us recognize this. And our goal here is to get a harmonized view of this. So for today, what I want to do is show you how it gets done. And that's one of the projects, and that's ONAP which is a combination of ecomp and OpenO. We have talked about this a lot. But what I want to sort of bring out is behind the scenes look at why it was done. By the way, it's open to community, as we announced yesterday. Uh, so take a look at it, download it. Um, I, had a, I had a user that actually went in and said they could download it and use it in, in 15 minutes and no help required. And they actually found one documentation bug. So that's fixed now. So, Take a look at it. Um, and so I'm going to welcome the first speaker, 
you know, the, the, um, the largest carrier in the world, right? And she owns the innovation, she owns the uh, research. And uh, please welcome uh, Deputy GM of China Mobile Research, Madam Yang. Oh, oh. Thank you, Abhi. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here to witness the kickoff of ONAP today. And uh, I'm very glad to have this opportunity to share some of our views on the uh, future network. Uh, first of all, please allow me to introduce the China Mobile briefly. Uh, please. Oh. Uh, by the end of last year, uh, we have more than 503 million subscribers, 4G subscribers in our network. And that's account for over 30% of global LTE users. And we have constructed more than 1.5 million 4G uh, base stations. And for the better user experience, we have commercially launched the VOLTE in over 300 cities over the, uh, all over the China. So today, China Mobile are running the world largest 4G network. And the NovoNet is our vision of the future network. There were three goals in a future network. There were a new network architecture, new network operation, and a new network service. Uh, and uh, I believe the NFV and SDN will be the enable technique, technology with the future network. And let's look into the new network architecture. Uh, to, to, uh, in order to deal with the increasing huge data traffic and uh, the needs for the diverse services, uh, we are considering to re-architecture the network to, to make it more efficient, more intelligent, and uh, cost-saving. Uh, we are planning from three aspects. Uh, the first one is uh, to uh, Cloudified the infrastructure. That means the, to replacing the path central offices with new cloudified data center, which we call them TICS, Telecom Integrated Cloud. The second one is separating control and the user planes. Centralize the control unit in a, sm a small, a small number of cortex and set up the user plane network functions in the edge ticks, which are large numbers and located closer to the access point. Uh, the second one is building uh, up a powerful controller to achieve intelligent routing and uh, automatic configuration. Uh, nowadays, we are building our trial network, including four cities and some new services and uh, functions will be, that will be tested in the first stage, that uh, including the VEPC, VMS, uh, and uh, v, VBRAS, and uh, eBoard, uh, that will be tested in the first stage. And as to the new network operation and uh, service, we call for a new OSS. As we know, the traditional OSS can provide the fault management, configuration management, alerting management, and the performance management. But most of the OSS are proprietary product from uh, vendors or system integrators. So it's very difficult to realize end-to-end -end management. Uh, for the new network architecture, uh, we know the, the telecom cloud data center are distributed in our network. So the, for the new architecture, uh, for the new OSS, uh, some new capabilities should be 
uh, enhanced, including the distributed resource management, uh, the life cycle management for VNF, and uh, unified capability exposure to the third party application. The most important thing, I think, is to realize end to end the service orchestration and uh, automatic management. So, as uh, the, the, based on the above consideration, uh, we launched the, the open, o, open source orchestrator project under Linux Foundation uh, together with our partner last year. Uh, in less than one year, the Open O has developed 50 members and uh, more than 100 developers. And the first release set uh, was delivered uh, in only five months uh, after the launch. So I really appreciate all the members of the Open O for their excellent work. And based on the same idea, Today, China Mobile and uh, AT&T, along with other partners, co-founded the new project ONAP. Uh, thanks to, for the Lind Foundation's active coordination, and uh, I be, uh, we can we are able to re reach the win-win situation today, and uh, we believe that the new the the, the ONAP will have a great influence on the industry development and uh, we, I hope that uh, the new open source orchestrator will be the industry reference impl uh, implementation, uh, uh, new, uh, the, the infrastructure uh, reference of the new uh, next generation of OSS. And uh, in particular, we are expecting some new, uh, the, we are expecting the ONAP will uh, provide some new key features, including automated onboarding for the VNF, automated deployment for the network service on demand, automated management for FCAPs, and for the life cycle management of VNF and intelligent operation based on data analysis. So we are hoping that all partners work together to build the healthy ecosystem and accelerate the maturity of SDN and NFV. And we are also expecting that ONAP can work very closely with other open source projects and uh, related SDOs to promote the industry transformation as a whole. And we are waiting for more participants to join this project and promote ONAP to be a su successful open source community. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, that's all for our side. Now, please welcome Chris Rice from AT&T. Welcome. Thank you, Thank Thank you. you very much. Oh. Thank you, Madam Yang. Okay, so Madam Yang did a really great job talking about kind of the what we've done. I want to spend a little bit of time touching on that, but really more of kind of how. And I, I, think, I want to think of this as a framework for how to get involved, especially service providers to get involved, but really to the broader community. And so I bring this up because AT&T joined Linux Foundation as a platinum member, <clears throat> excuse me, in February of this year. But I want to do this as a compare and contrast. So about 10 years ago, I was working on a project, not in the exact same uh, position I'm in now, and I wanted to use some open source. And they said, well, you know, you're not allowed to use open source in AT&T. It's actually against policy to use open source. And so just to give you an idea how far we've come, not only are we a platinum member in the Linux Foundation, but today about, and we break it up different ways, but about 40% of the software that we use inside AT&T is built on open source. I want to talk about how we went through our transformation. How did we decide what we needed to do? And the top two areas there on this chart, probably everyone here who would be giving a presentation could put those up there. 
customer enablement, speed and flexibility, right? Improved efficiency, operations, those are motherhood and apple pie, everybody would agree with those. But how do you get to those? What technologies do you use? What platforms, what structures needed to do it? So I'm gonna start at the bottom because that's really, the reason it's there, it's the foundation. It's for us, it's the skills, it's the people, it's the capabilities transformation that we need to go through. People, process, and culture. And that's been fundamental at at and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that. Then it's built on a common network cloud, a network cloud, that's different than a standard cloud. Has to handle network workloads. And then the fundamental kind of storyline that runs through those three pillars is think of that as applications and services built on a common network operating system that are under software control. And so thanks to a lot of great work by people in this audience and um, others, you know, the virtualization, there's been a tremendous amount of work there. Intel, who was up here earlier, you know, in the past 10 years, their standard processors have improved about 100x in their ability to process packets, getting to the point, a tipping point, disruptive innovation, where we can start thinking of those as service providers as doing workloads that we need to do. Merchant Silicon, Andre Fuich, my boss who was up here earlier, giving off the kickoff, talked about some of the work we're doing there. You're seeing that Merchant Silicon taking over where only proprietary silicon used to be able to do that, another tipping point in disruptive innovation. Software-defined networking, probably don't need to preach to the choir here. Great amount of uh, work done there, a lot of uh, capabilities that we can leverage. But really what was a missing ingredient for us was that thing in the middle, Madam Yang talked about it, which was really that network operating system for SDN automation that would really do the complete life cycle associated with that. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that and clearly we have a project about it as well. But I wrote a blog, I don't know, maybe it was uh, six months ago around kind of the tenets of open source, at least as far as we were concerned, and that was like, code, community, and commitment. And I wanna kind of reference those back here. I'm gonna change the order because the more I thought about it, it's really about a commitment and then code and then community. So I actually have it in that order now. And so this was our commitment. Our commitment as AT&T was that we were going to reskill our workforce. We were gonna do that under a new social contract. And we were gonna take and evolve the intelligent and great people that we had and give them skills of the future. And so what did we do? Well, John Donovan, again, who was up here earlier, talked about how we're moving our workforce in a direction that's really the future of the way that networks will be built going forward. About 45% of the folks that John has, and John has about half the people at AT&T, AT&T has around 270,000 people, so that's a lot of people. Around half those folks have pivoted. This is more broad now, actually, with an AT&T. Uh, actually done throughout all of AT&T. John's organization then kind of pushed it down to the rest of AT&T. About 50% or so of the people who go through this reskilling are likely to get hired. That's actually very good because there's significantly more than two people applying for a job at AT&T. And about 1,250 people have been through this and have been uh, put into a new skill or, or new a job or promoted. And so what were the tools that we put in place, right? This is a great ask of people, but you gotta make sure you give them the right tools to be able to do it. We put things in like skill coaches, we changed our hiring process to make sure we flag folks who've gone through this. There's a learning portal that talks about your progress, where you need, what you need to go, kind of the skills you have, the job you want, what skills do you need to acquire. We had apprenticeships. Interestingly, uh, we, we kind of learned something that quite frankly the academics have known for a long time because we would go out to our people who were skilled in these areas and we say, well, what would people need to do this? And the data science people would load it up with data science courses and the networking people would load it up with uh, networking courses. And really what you realize is there's a core curriculum that everybody really needs and then there's specialization. And that's the way we ended up. And so then there's code, right? And we talked about this. We, uh, we, uh, released open uh, source e-comp into the Linux Foundation. We merged with the uh, great folks in China Mobile and others who were part of OpenO. We created something called ONAP. Uh, and, and why are we doing this? Well, quite frankly, all of the service providers uh, are very, very good at managing complexity. We're probably not as good as we should be at avoiding it. And really what we, I mean by that is that we wanna be able to start building services and applications faster but if you look for the people who do that and do that well, 
they've actually spent a good amount of time building a platform that allows them to do that. It's not like they start from scratch every time. And so to increase the pace of innovation, you need some kind of common network operating system, you need some kind of platform. You wanna make sure that all the functions you need are built in. Orchestration is essentially the ante to be in the game. It doesn't mean you were dealt a great hand. Really, to be, have a great hand, you gotta make sure that you have the ability to do metrics, you have the ability to do policy, so you gotta bake some of those things in easy service provisioning, be able to manage it. Ideally, you would like to be able to scale it automatically, so you'd like to be able to do control loops and closed loops and machine learning to make that happen. And really importantly is you wanna get rid of the kind of rack and stack, uh, rip and replace, forklift, take your favorite name there, uh, that we have to go through every time we upgrade the equipment and be able to do it through software. In the community, the outreach to the community. So ONAP has been in existence for about 50 days since it was announced just before Mobile World Congress. Uh, the service providers that we have represented there on the right side of the graph represent about 38% of the worldwide mobile subscribers. Uh, you can see the uh, vendors that we have on the other side as well. I think you'll recognize a lot of those names. I, this is clearly an A-team. Uh, um, we're very excited to have these set of folks doing this. Uh, a total of 27 members in 50 days, and I think it was five that were announced this week. Um, and then there's 34% additional wireless subscribers, let me call them, in the pipeline. And what do I mean by in the pipeline? Is that means that We've had one or more conversations with those folks about coming on board and, and being a part of this. And I'm gonna say something that might shock the audience here, that there are times when the service provider community can be what I'll call thrifty and methodical. And uh, what I'm really doing is when I talk today, I wanna to reach out to that community and I wanna say that, look, don't be a spectator, be a participant, jump in. There are folks that can help you on this journey and we're glad to do that. So I want to thank you all for the time today. And